But some real old tubers that are old and have been around, I've had them for probably six, seven years. I think the oldest one there is an 07. Um, and uh, I will show you is, is, is the tuber is packed and stored. It likes to grow anyway. And I don't know if many of you have done this, but it still tries to grow. And it, it, it'll slow down if it, and it stops if it doesn't have the water. Of course, as soon as we plunge these tubers into 80 degree tanks or 75, they'll throw a plant within probably oh, a week anyway. And we'll have the first floating leaf and then of course it goes on from there. If, uh, if we, you know, we can only grow one half of one percent of what I have in the pool. So that's, that's a lot of back tubers to do or keep in stock. And it gets uh, more every year. So we have to keep this thing going in a situation so that we don't lose any of the old material, such as the 1917 praying plant that we showed today. Uh, we've got 17 tubers of it. Uh, very rare, hard to find, can't find it. So I kind of collect tubers or, or lilies like a lot of people collect antiques. We've got a lot of antique lilies as well as conventional or contemporary lilies. Uh, also, we have the new material that's coming online. And the Midway, I've got a complete collection of the Randix, uh, you know, the Uber lilies. We also have uh, Pring, a lot of his material, and you saw today many winch hybrids. Probably, I don't know, Tim, what, about? About 15 or 18. 15 or 18 winch hybrids that uh, are very rare to, have to be able to see them. They're both mostly in Australia. But uh, anyway, to go on with the program here now, this is probably not going to take an hour, but we can talk about whatever you want to regarding these things. Tim, uh, if you'll uh, pour the water in one of those deals, if you want to kind of watch them, I've got a, a, so we've got tubers here in the pots that we grow them in. I told you the soil mixture that we do. Sometimes we don't put any fertilizer at all. If you put too much of 7803, I told you about that. And so that's the, that's the water, that's the fertilizer that I use. I also use crushed up pond tabs, but I put just a very minute amount because if you put just a little bit too much, I told you like a quarter teaspoon in a four ounce cup. If you go a quarter, a heaping quarter teaspoon, the plant will grow up and bloom. We don't want to, we don't want it to bloom. We want it to go into a juvenile state to sleep. And that's the way nature takes care of the pools. Like in Africa, the rain pools come, the lilies start, they grow, and then the thing starts to dry up. And the roots that were the feeder roots become the contractile roots that pull the tuber down into the mud, and then it dries off. And that's what we duplicate here, or in our tanks, when we grow the tubers off. And we grow many thousands. So protected, we perfected a way to keep the tubers so you don't have to grow them every year, because uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, this is a lily here. Uh, August Coke. It was uh, put together in 05. Now, uh, I'm going to show you how we do this in, in a minute, but you see that I have it wrapped in something. Now, uh, you can come and look at this. How many plants would you say are there? <coughs> you can see better than me. <laughs> About 20. So, see, of course, this is a viviparous lily. So, this is right near 20 plants. So we've got August Cup pretty well taken care of here. Uh, of course, we can get it anyway. It's a recent lily, I mean, but this lily was packed in uh, 32505. And we haven't done anything to it until today, except re-wet this fabric. The fabric is the key thing in this, in this method of, of uh, storage. It is a dacron, or it is a polyester. It's called pellon. You can buy it at Walmart, anywhere you can get this material. Uh, Pellon is very easy to get. It's, it's <coughs> various cloth stores, and it's the, it's a very easy thing to keep. You don't want anything in this in this operation to rot or harbor bacteria. Now we can use uh, Benamil or some kind of a herbs. I mean uh, fungicide, but primarily I don't use anything. Sometimes we'll sulfur the bulbs if we think that we may have some kind of rhizotonia or something that will come in and destroy the, the tuber as it rests. As long as this rests in this bag, it's, we, look, we say that it's, it's airtight, but it's really not. It breathes. 
it's, it frays here at the seam. You want to make sure you put it together good. But because it breathes at the seam is the key issue. The jars, when we sealed them up, would kill the lily. The plant's alive, but it's in a dormant state. In, uh, in nature, in the rain pools, it's still outside. But if we pack it in a, in a sand environment and then seal it off, uh, it tends to die and uh, will fungus up and, and perish. If we put too much moisture in the sand, it will rot. So we don't want that to happen. This way, we avoid both, and we don't have a problem with storage of this material. Of these material, this is all Brachycerus and an Ecfa material is stored this way. All of the lotus types, uh, the subgenus lotus uh, or lotos, we uh, keep also the same way. So that takes care of the tropicals. Uh, Hydrocallus is kept the same way. Uh, we keep uh, those lilies just the same way as this. And we grow hydrocallus seed, we have it, but we also uh, pack the tubers the same way. So all the tropical material is, that's known throughout the world, it's uh, in the genus Nymphia. This is how we store the material at the IWPR and keep it for uh, generations to come. 